Here is a basic derivatives preview. If you can come into calculus knowing these rules, you will be in much better shape than if you did not know these rules. So our first rule is the derivative of a constant. So without even knowing the concept of a derivative, we can still learn this rule. It's a lot of memorization and not a lot of steps in problem solving in order to take a derivative. So the derivative of a constant means the derivative of any number. It doesn't have an x on it. So ln of 2 is just a weird looking number. You could plug it into your calculator, find the ln button, plug in ln of 2, and it's going to give you a number. And the derivative of every number, so first of all, we'll call the derivative y prime. And the derivative of every number is 0. So the derivative of ln of 2 is 0. 2 pi is another different looking constant. Pi is a button on your calculator as well, just like ln was. 2 pi is going to be a number, and the derivative of the number is 0. Same thing with this minus e squared. e is the button on your calculator. It represents another irrational number. The derivative of every number is just 0. So same thing with the derivative of 6. The derivative of 6 is no surprise, 0. So not too bad to have to memorize any number. As long as it doesn't have an x on it, the derivative is going to be 0. Okay, so let's let things get a little bit more interesting. Let's have an x in our problem. So the next rule is called the power rule. You'll have to memorize the names, but it's when you have x to any power. The derivative, which is going to be y prime, we're going to bring down the power n and raise x to the n minus 1. Bring down the power and subtract 1 for the new power is one way to say that. So if we do that with some actual numbers instead of the letter n, I think it makes a little more sense. So the derivative of f would be called f prime of x. And now I'm going to bring down the power, so I'm going to bring down the 5, and raise x to a new power by doing 5 minus 1 is 4. We can do that same thing another time. We're going to keep bringing down the power and subtracting 1 for the new power. That's how we would take the derivative with an x in it. So this one's called y, so the derivative is y prime. You just put basically an apostrophe looking thing on it, and that's how you label the derivative. And we'll bring down the 20 and subtract 1 for the new power. 20 minus 1 is 19. So there's our first two rules. Let's keep looking at our next rule. Is what if it's not just x to a power, but it has a constant multiple in front of it? So we're looking at this constant multiple rule. We would want to take the derivative of y, so we'll call it y prime. And we're still going to do the same thing. This is what I would call a do-nothing rule. It doesn't change how we're taking the derivative. So we're going to keep the k. We're still going to bring down the power and subtract 1 for the new power. All this rule says is if you have a constant multiple, keep it. Doesn't change how you take the derivative, though. So still bring down the power, subtract 1 for the new power. So we have g of x here. The derivative is going to be labeled g prime of x. We're going to bring down the power. So we're going to have 6 times 3 when we bring it down. So 6 times 3 is going to give us 18. x to the 3 minus 1 is 2. Bring down the 3, raise it to the 2. 6 times 3 is 18, x to the 2. Let's see if we can do that again. You could definitely pause the video and take a guess at what this answer is. Derivative of h is going to be labeled h prime. I'm going to keep the constant multiple 3, but it doesn't change how I take the derivative. I'm going to still bring down the 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. And then I'm going to raise x to the 5 minus 1 is 4. So with this one, we kind of get a mini rule. So this mini rule applies if we have just kx. If we have x raised to the first power, what's going to happen every time? So if we think about just applying this rule in general over here, y prime, we would bring down the power, we would just get k times 1, since the power is not written, it's the first power. And then we raise x to the 0. When we do 1 minus 1, we get 0. Well, x to the 0 just equals 1, so we end up with k times 1, which would just be k. So it's a mini rule. If you have just x to the first, the derivative ends up just being the number out front. Let's look at that again, but with a real number instead of the letter k. I think it makes it a little bit easier. So derivative of 62x, if you tried to bring down the power, you'd have 62 times 1, which is 62. And then you'd have x to the 1 minus 1 is 0. And normally we never write x to 0 because anything to the 0 power is just 1. So the derivative of 62x is 62. 
Derivative of 29x would be 29. Derivative of negative 54x would be negative 54. Derivative of 1.5x would be 1.5. There's a pattern to this. When we look at our next problem, we have h prime of x for our derivative. And the derivative of negative 2.4x is just going to be negative 2.4. When you bring down the power and it's a 1, you just get the number that was out front. So even with these crazy looking constants too, if your function was y equals 2 pi x, putting an x on it makes it so it's no longer a constant. And the derivative would follow that mini rule there. It would be the derivative of 2 pi x is 2 pi, the number out front of x. So be careful, they look similar. Derivative of 2 pi is zero because that's just a constant, but you put an x on it, and it's a different rule. It's a number out front of x. Derivative of 5x is 5. Derivative of 6x is 6. Derivative of 2 pi x is 2 pi. So now if we keep looking at our rules here, we have the sum and difference rule. This is another do nothing rule. It doesn't change how we take our derivative. So we're just gonna keep bringing down the power and subtracting one for the new power. Looking at this first one, h prime of x. Well, the derivative of x squared would be bringing down 2 and raising x to the first. That's our power rule. Derivative of 5x is our mini rule. Derivative of 5x is 5. And derivative of negative 1 is a constant. So the derivative of that is 0, which we don't even have to write plus or minus 0 at the end. So the sum or difference rule just says take the derivative of each piece normally and if they're added in the original function, add them in their derivative. If they're subtracted in the original function, subtract them in their derivative. That's why we did the derivative of x squared. And since it was added up here, we did the derivative of 5x that we added to it. 2x plus 5. Let's try that again. Combining all of our rules so far. f prime of x, the derivative of f. I'm going to bring down the power. I have a constant multiple, so I'm going to keep it. 5 times 4 is 20 x to the 4 minus 1 is 3. Here we have our mini rule. Derivative of negative 12x is negative 12. And we have a constant at the end. Derivative of positive 3 is just 0. All right. Now we are halfway through our rules. We're going to add in the exponential function. So if we have e to the x, this is possibly the easiest rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So very simple. We don't even have to bring down the power and multiply and then subtract 1. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So we're going to keep that in mind. We're going to take the derivative of g of x. We'll call it g prime. And we'll have the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of negative 5x is our mini rule. It's negative 5. And derivative of e cubed. Be super careful. e cubed is just a constant. It doesn't have an x on it. So what's the derivative going to be? It's going to be zero. The derivative of every single constant is zero, even if it looks funny.